Marvel Universe of Superheroes is the world's first and most extensive, comprehensively sourced, and thoroughly researched exhibition ever devoted to the Marvel Universe. It is a marquee exhibit presented during the 80th anniversary of Marvel and alongside three blockbuster Marvel Studio film releases. Marvel Universe of Superheroes is on trend to be a blockbuster summer exhibition for the Franklin Institute and for the city of Philadelphia, with pre-sale tickets surpassing 40,000, second only to King Tut in 2007. We're just so excited to have this exhibition. Marvel has created a cultural landscape that spans generations and delivers massive, undeniable global appeal. We are thrilled to have with us today some of the creative talent at Marvel and Marvel Comics to share some insight into the strength of the brand. Please welcome Marvel's Editor-in-Chief, C.B. Siebolski. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So from the men and women of science to the men and women of superheroes, uh, we could not be more pleased uh, to be here and look forward to speaking with you all. Um, I remember being a boy, a young boy, reading my first Marvel comics. I was the kind of kid that would stay up late at night after your mother told you to go to bed and you know, read with a flashlight under the, the, the blanket until she came in and you know, made me go to bed and still get up again and read more comics. And from back in those days, I always wanted to follow in the footsteps of Stan Lee. And I can't tell you what a mind-blowing experience is for me now to be not only the position I am, but for Marvel to be in the position that we as a company are in. Uh, many of you might know this, but this year is Marvel's 80th anniversary. Marvel Comics number one, which you will see an actual copy of inside later, uh, was published in 1939. And the company has grown since then over those 80 years. Uh, someone once said that Marvel is the longest continuous fictional narrative in history. Over 80 years, the tapestry that was created back in Marvel Comics number one has continued to this day. Uh, and it has grown, and I always often compare it to a tree. Uh, Martin Goodman, the artists of those original books, and later Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, John Romita, all the creators of all these wonderful characters and stories, planted that seed with the comics. And that seed has since grown and branched out. The great TV shows of the 80s and 90s to today, that everything that we've been doing. You know, the uh, consumer products. Uh, and of course, the films, which is now the top of the tree, the widest branches that everyone around the world has seen. Marvel has become this global phenomenon that started with comics. And people always ask me, what makes Marvel special? What separates Marvel from some of these other fictional kind of properties and you know genres and even other superhero companies? What's the Marvel magic? And there really is no one answer, but I like to compare it often to the four H's. The humanity, the heroism, the heart and the humor of the characters that you find in our comics. Not just the superheroes, but the human heroes that you find under the mask. That is what's so special about Marvel. And as you walk through the exhibition today, you're gonna see not only uh, the superheroes, but those characters that are underneath the masks. The Peter Parkers, the Tony Starks, the Bruce Banners, the Steve Rogers. They're equally on display here. And that, when you think about it, is what really makes Marvel so relatable to men and women, boys and girls around the world. So again, I thank you for coming. I thank our hosts here at the Franklin Institute, at PICO, at SC Exhibitions. This could not be possible without them. So as you go through this, let's enjoy it. And once and always, make mine Marvel. Thank you. One of the many things that makes this exhibit so remarkable is its ability to deliver something for everyone. Aspects designed to appeal to new and old fans, novices and experts, kids and adults. The exhibit features over 300 artifacts, including highly covetable items from all of Marvel's errors and media. Chief Curator Ben Saunders expertly crafted the story that you are about to see and is here today to present some exhibit highlights. Please welcome Marvel's Chief Curator Ben Saunders. Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Um, I'm not sure if you can immediately tell from my accent, but I'm not from around here. Um, I, I was born in Wales, uh, which is part of a country that used to be called the United Kingdom. Um, and um, there is a, um, 
There is such a thing as British Marvel. There was such a thing as British Marvel when I was growing up. There was no such thing as British DC. Um, as, as some of you may know, um, Stan Lee married an English woman. And it is my belief that he created British Marvel so that he could have tax deductible trips across um, <laughs> the Atlantic um, and, and see the, the relatives whenever he wanted to. It wouldn't surprise me at all if that was at least part of the original motivation. But whatever the cause, the result was that as a very small child, um, uh, I encountered Marvel Comics. I, I am a professor of literature at the University of Oregon, and I learned to read from Marvel Comics. Um, I remember actually trying, uh, reading my first Spider-Man comic, and um, reading was a new thing, and I, I was trying to sort of persuade my mother to read it to me instead, because that would be easier. And I said, is he a good guy or a bad guy? And she said, well, with a name like that, I think he must be a bad guy. So it means that my encounter with Marvel Comics was not only my first encounter with moral ambiguity, it was also a very early lesson in not trusting my parents. <laughs> and um, I, thought, I, I actually consciously remember thinking, I need to learn to read so that I can read this. Uh, and it has ended up changing the, the direction of my life, and I can hardly believe that I am standing here in front of you now with an audience that includes um, C.B. Sabosky, Marvel's Editor-in-Chief, um, also Joe Casada, I know he's here somewhere, Marvel's uh, uh, Chief Creative Officer. Um, so uh, I'm so glad you guys are here. I can't wait to see your reactions to some of this. You're going to be hearing a lot from me um, over the next, uh, well, for as long as you can stand it, frankly. So I won't talk for too much now. I will be uh, taking you all on a tour, showing you my, the highlights. Um, so for now, I just want to thank the producers of the, the show, uh, Christoph Schultz and everybody else at, um, at Semmel for giving me uh, a chance to do something like this. I want to thank everyone at Marvel for all their help. I want to thank the extraordinarily generous uh, private collectors who have given us access to uh, the, these pieces of original art, which are uh, unique and extraordinarily valuable financially and also as just pieces of uh, America's pop culture history. Uh, I think Marvel belongs uh, inside a museum. Um, and I think that. Um, uh, some of the highest aesthetic achievements of popular culture in the 20th and 21st century come from Marvel Comics, and I think the, the, the cultural and sociological implications of the work, as well as the aesthetic implications of the work, should be obvious to anyone with a heart and mind. They shouldn't need it explained to them. Um, and I think you really are going to uh, enjoy what we have to see. So thank you all for coming.